Hi, I'm Steve Thompson, President of Emory Thompson Machine. I'm Christy Brown, Vice President of Sales and Marketing. And welcome to our weekly Questions Answered. My first one this week, Christy, is... You didn't ask me if you can go first. Can I go first? Yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. May I please? Yes. <laughs> May I, teacher? Okay, where was I? My first uh, uh, question to be answered is uh, something that Christy found last week. Uh, we have been talking for three and a half years now about uh, a product called allulose. Uh, allulose is made from rare fruits, and being a type 1 diabetic that I am, uh, the beauty of allulose is I can make an Italian ice uh, or sorbets or a lot of different products without the uh, effect of raising my blood sugar, uh, unlike uh, sugar or uh, cane sugar or some of the others. So it really is a great boon. It means that you can make a sugar-free Italian ice uh, for your customers. It still has sugar in it, but it's not going to affect them. So that product is called allulose. And uh, if uh, you contact us, uh, I have five formulas uh, for Italian ice that I have uh, for, done uh, a few years ago for making uh, allulose Italian ice. It works great, the flavor is terrific. What Christie found is someone finally caught on to what Emery Thompson exclusively has been doing for years, and this is called Swerve. Ken, you have a picture of Swerve up there you can put it up on the screen? Well, maybe not that kind of Swerve, but uh, that's its name, and it's got a cute little uh, multicolored butter, uh, what do you call that? Bird. Bird. Hummingbird. Hummingbird on it, and it's got this fancy name, Swerve, and the ingredient list in here won't take a long time to read. Ingredients, allulose. <laughs> that's all that's in there. Um, we thought that the, uh, the, the price of allulose is, is a bit on the high side, but much to my surprise, I priced uh, allulose uh, at the market at Target or Target, and I priced Swerve, and don't you know they both came out to 66 cents per ounce. So whichever one you want to buy, if you want to buy the fancy package at the store, or if you want to buy it off of uh, Amazon, you're going to pay about the same uh, price for this. This is a 12 ounce bag, and usually the allulose comes in uh, two pound bags. So that's where we are with allulose. It's something that I've been using a long time and uh, great for my uh, diabetic uh, numbers. And now you can buy it in a fancy, pretty package. Yes. <laughs> can you make Italian ice with only fruit and not a base? Yes, you can. Let me sit up first. You can always make Italian ice without a base. Um, that's how we prefer it. Fresh is always the best, um, but there are some flavors that you really can't make, you know, from fruits. Some fruits are just bland on their own, like mangoes and blueberries and cantaloupe. They are very blah on their own self, so if you try to do that with just sugar and water, it's not going to be very flavorful. So that's when you do need bases. Uh, mango base comes in handy, and you can always put in mango juice or real mangoes or fro frozen mangoes that you've thawed. And then, of course, there's those that you really can't make from fruit, and that's margarita. Now, a little bit of tequila in this, and <laughs> it'll go a long way. A little bit of tequila in anything goes a long <laughs> <Yes>. way. <laughs> <laughs> and as you all know, I like to do uh, alcohol-infused or boozy-flavored ice creams and ices and sorbets. Um, so that's when bases do come in handy. So yes and no, but always stick with fresh if you can. Did you know that the number two selling flavor of Italian ice is, is mango? Yeah. Lemon ice first and then mango. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. It is. When I first brought it home to my Rugrats, now they're all uh, senior executives and lawyers and everything else, but when they were Rugrats, I brought home mango ice that I had made. <laughs> there was no way. They were going to eat the frozen green beans before they would touch mango ice. <laughs> now it's number two. It's okay. Not my favorite, but it's okay. Uh, let's see. My second question is... Um, is ice cream hard enough to serve when it comes right out of the machine? And can I also put it right into an ice cream cone to be served? Or does it have to be put in the deep freeze overnight? Uh, it needs additional freezing. In order for it to come out of any batch freezer, whether it's an Emery Thompson or a Capigiani or a Stolting, uh, if you're going to serve it as hard ice cream, uh, you want to uh, freeze it down first. Yes, you could uh, pull it out of the machine and put it into a dish uh, but it's going to be on the soft side. Why is it on the soft side? Because you need it to be able to come out of the barrel. And if we froze it down to the consistency of Haagen-Dazs, it just wouldn't come out. 
uh, it would be stuck in the machine. So yes, you'll need to uh, put it into the freezer for a while. Also, it's important that you harden your ice cream because that's your inventory. Over in Italy, they have maybe six flavors of fresh gelato at 10.30 in the morning, but you might go in by noon and no, I'm sorry, we're out of uh, the tiramisu because they just made a small amount for the day. You can't do that in the U.S. market. If you advertise that you've got mint chip, you always have to have mint chip. So we do that by making batches of uh, mint chip in advance and storing it in the freezer. Not Steve's mint chip, Italian ice. No, mine <laughs> with the uh, little too much mint extract in it. And mouthwash. <laughs> um, a customer, she had asked, I make Italian ice, so can I put more um, liquid or product into my machine than I do when I make ice cream? Absolutely. Uh, so when you work with water-based products, you don't need as much room as you would if you're working with dairy, because as we talked about last week, dairy has expansion. Uh, so the max you could put into your 24 quarts, if you're working with just Italian ice, water ice, uh, sorbets, is 14 quarts. So if you want to add more, a little more, you definitely can, because uh, like I said, you don't need all that extra room. Now, if you're working with dairy, the max you can do is 12. Uh, but you can have extra two more quarts if you're working with anything water-based and dairy-free. Because uh, dairy-free obviously has no fat, which means no expansion. How many phone calls do you get a day where the person says, my machine isn't freezing in a proper amount of time? And you ask, well, how much mix yeah. did you put in? Well, I put in, how many mix? How many quarts of mix did they put in the 24 Six. quart? <laughs> or the 24? Or the 24, yeah, 24 Tw quarts. <laughs> <laughs> it's output. We, yeah. How much ice cream will come out? Um, I have a person who wrote and says for the CB350, that's uh, this one right back here. Uh, for the CB350, the spec sheet says 220 volt and single phase. Can I use this machine in a normal office? Um, in an office, yes, if you have a 220 volt line. What's an example of a 220 volt line? Uh, an electric oven, uh, your clothes dryer, central air conditioning. Every building in North America has 220 volt coming in, and then it's broken down in your home or your office into plug-in uh, 110 voltage. So wherever there's 220 volt, uh, yes, you can run that machine. The one next to it, the CB200, comes in 110 volt. That's plug-in, so you can have that in your uh, kitchen at home, plug it right in and be making ice cream. The important point is, uh, single phase versus three phase. We'll talk about that another time, but every building in North America has single phase. That's what we call American voltage. And you get into uh, Europe and instead of American voltage, they have European voltage, which is three phase. Uh, my last one, is the hardening process the same uh, for Italian ice as it is ice cream? Good yes, question. Yes, it is. But the scooping temperatures are completely different. So after you get done making your product, you can put both your ice cream, Italian ices, and sorbet into the same hardening cabinet, such as the one behind me, that can go as low as 25 below zero. That's completely fine. Now, when it comes to your tempering process and your scooping or your dipping cabinets, you will have to have two separate ones, one for ices and then one for ice creams. Uh, your Italian ices usually scoop anywhere from 13 to 16 degrees. Reason is, is the higher the sugar, you know, the lower that you, about the 13, 14 ranges where you can put it. If it contains alcohol, it's going to scoop a lot softer. Um, so you'll notice those, those temperatures. Now your ice creams, you're usually safe around six, six degrees is good. So yes for the hardening and no for the dipping. I think that's it for me. Okay. You know, when we do these uh, every week, every single week we're doing the questions answered. We hope you'll send in questions. I mentally judge how we're doing by the dogs. <laughs> Stella left. She's right there. Oh, she's way back there. Okay. And here's Sammy and Sammy's legs are moving like this. So we put her <laughs> to sleep. So hopefully we didn't put you to sleep and you'll tune in next week and uh, we'll see you then. Bye. Goodbye.